everyone welcome to my channel my name is Belinda today's video um, I've been looking forward to making it because I've gotten a lot of recommendations from people who've been watching my CISA videos thanks for checking it out I am very pleasantly surprised by the reception the number of people out there who really want to see um, or they've already even started the CISA journey they're looking into doing the qualification so thank you so much for checking it out if you haven't already um, I will link the playlist in the description section. So today's video, going straight into it, um, today's video is focused on how to get certified. So this is aimed at anyone who has already done the exam or are close to doing the exam and just interested in knowing what next after exams. Um, so it's, I'm going to cover basically the process of getting certified, how much it costs, filling in the form, the experience form, and getting that signed off, and basically how you'd apply to get certified. Um, yeah, so if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you are a follower, if you're part of the family, welcome back. All right, so it's going to be easier for me to share my screen to show you where you go on um, to apply to get certified. Um, but for those who are not aware, you need five years experience. Um, to get CISA certified. However, there are waivers. So normally, if you have already done a degree, if you're, you're, you're a graduate, you've gone to university, you will only need around three years because you can get a two-year waiver on the five-year work experience requirements. So for those who have done the CISA qualification, but they don't have any degree, um, that doesn't stop you from getting CISA qualified, you just need full five years experience, but there are other waivers in place as well. So for example, if you've done ACCA, if you've done um, general IT, you have general IT experience, or you have general audit experience. So I'm going to cover all those waivers that are there to help you reduce the amount of time that you need to prove. But if you've worked for five years in a relevant role, then you know what, you don't even need the waivers. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to share my screen now. Um, tempted to say, um, let me know if you can see my screen, but this is pre-recorded, um, so I will go with the best case scenario that you can actually see my screen. All right. So I am on the Ithaca website. Um, let me just check that you are seeing this properly. Perfect. Yeah, it's showing exactly as I needed to show. So when you go on the Isaka website, you just need to type CISA in the search button and you will see different options. Um, the option I'm on is get CISA certified. So what you can see here at the top. So I clicked on that and I landed on this page. So the process of getting certified is very simple. Um, the place I was saying you can search is here at the top. Just type CISA um, and get CISA certified is one of the options that comes as a uh, result. Um, so the first step, of course, is to pay $50 um, processing fee. But that doesn't stop you from filling in the form in the meantime, because of course, you want to see how much relevant experience you have and how much more you need to get. Um, so to fill in the form, you go to the download section. And when you go to download, you will get the options in different languages, depending on what's your native language, what's the official language in your country. Um, and the third step is basically, once you finalized your payment, you and you have completed the form, just need to log a ticket. So there is in the help section, you can log a ticket as though you're inquiring. That's what I did. I'm not aware of another process, but you log a ticket and the reason being you are applying for certification and attach the form. And it's as easy as that. As long as the form has all the relevant details, you will hear back from them literally soon. Like, I don't think it even took me two weeks for them to come back to me and confirm that they've approved my application for certification. And of course, after some time is when they'll send you your certificate. Um, and you can use CISA as your designation. All right, so in terms of requirements, you need to have done the exam at least within five years of when you're applying. So don't take too long. Once you've done your exam, you have five years from then to apply for certification. So this means it's good because it means if you are a student um, or someone who hasn't started working, it doesn't stop you from doing CISA. You don't need to be working to do CISA. You can actually do the exam and then get the five years experience that's needed because you have five years from when you do your exam to get certified. All right, um, but I, maybe I'm biased because that's what I did. I recommend you start working, get to know more, get familiar um, with some of the concepts through work and then do the certification. But 
it's all down to your preference. There's nothing stopping you in terms of prerequisites for you to do C, so you can go straight into it. Especially for people who are thinking of switching roles, some of the easiest ways to change your job, if you want to change jobs, is to do a relevant qualification in that job that you want to do. And CISA might be the qualification you need to get into, you know, IT audit or or cyber um, security or such, you know, um, anything in the IT security space um, or IT assurance space, controls assurance, that this could be what you need to get a leg, your leg into that type of career. So you need to have finished the exam. Um, these others are just general, like, I mean, you for you to even get certified, you would at least anticipate that you have morals and, you know, you stick to the code of ethics. Um, and that after you get certified, you're going to make sure you maintain you maintain your accreditation. Um, the most important bit, of course, is the work experience because you have your exam, you have that in the bag. So the work experience, what work experience do you need? You need at least five years, as I said. However, you can get waivers of up to three years. So like in my case, I had a waiver of at least two years. So I only needed to prove three years work experience, which I did because I had my job, which my previous job, because I've changed roles now, um, where I was working as an, a technology risk analyst. Um, so there are many roles, especially in controls assurance, IT security, even in IT, if you're working in IT, you might find that your role is actually still relevant um, as long as you're able to show that you've done um, you've met the objectives in each area, which I'll show you as I go through the form. Um, so you can see here, the waivers are up to a maximum of three years. Um, and this can be either you worked in a normal IT role, nothing to do with security, nothing to do with controls, you're just working in IT. One year of that can count towards reducing the amount of work experience that you need to show. Or you could be in a non-information systems auditing experience. So this is for any financial auditors. So if you've just you've worked as a normal auditor, not specific to IT systems, because CISA, um, you need to probably check out my other videos if you don't know what CISA is, but CISA is Certified Information Systems Auditor. So this is focused on IT. Um, but if you've just been auditing generally normal financial auditor, auditing financial statements, um, you can use one year of that towards applying for a waiver. Also, if you've done um, a university degree, you can get up to two years um, waiver for that. Um, and also if you've done a master's. So there's educational um, things that if you have, you can basically, of course, I use my degree. My degree is in engineering, nothing to do with IT um, systems, um, kind of related, but not necessarily. But even if your degree is in French, it will count. Um, they, it counts towards your waiver. All right. Um, so you can actually download the form from here, um, but I, I prefer to do it from up here just to be sure. So if you click on download, oh, it actually brings you down to the same place. Sounds like it looks familiar. So English is my native language. So I click on English and there you go. Here's the form. The form is also very self-explanatory as well, but I will walk you through just to show you what are the key things um, that also surprised me when I was filling it in. So you fill in your personal details when you pass the exam. As it says here, it needs to be within the last five years. Um, and then work experience. So if you have your five years work experience, you don't need to apply for any waivers. But remember, it's not just any work experience. So it needs to be a role in either information systems auditing. I will just zoom in in case the text is too small on the screen. Um, but yeah, so it needs to be a role in either information systems auditing, which is where my role was in, because um, I was in IT controls advisory, um, or the technology risk consulting. Um, but you could even be the auditor. So it could be in an external auditor. So you're supporting an audit, but as an IT specialist, that's relevant as well. In fact, that's proper in it. Um, it could be in control, information systems control. So where you're doing maybe a first line, second line role um, where it, with, it, within the client. So I'm talking more from, um, the reason I'm saying, talking about it like that is I've, I work in an audit firm. So we are always the ones, you know, coming in either from a consulting perspective or auditing them. But if you're working in industry, so you're the client, um, you're within the organization itself that has to submit um, financial reporting every so often. And therefore you have systems that help with that. Um, 
you could be part of the compliance risk and controls, um, depending on how you name it, um, accounting risk. I, I think there are different names that go with it, but it could be part of the risk and compliance team. It could be part of the cybersecurity team. There are different names that go with those teams that basically look after the systems to make sure that you know they're secure, their controls in place. So if you have a role in that in any capacity, um, then that would be a relevant role. And as you can see here, information system security. So you could be looking after um, ensuring that the systems are secure. Um, so any of any role in that, if you have five years experience, you're good to go. Um, but even if you don't have five years, even if it's for two years, so this is where you'd log how many years you have experience. And you would you can't just log and not have someone who can verify that. So just make sure whatever experience you put down, you actually have access to maybe someone from that company, either a colleague, supervisor, manager who can validate that you actually have experience in that role in that company. Um, and as you can see here, general work experience. So you see here, they say minimum two years. So you can't just have waivers throughout and that aligns with, you can only have waivers up to three years. So you can't be like, um, total up all the different types of waivers and get your five years experience from that. They need at least two years of that to be in a relevant role. Um, when we come now to the waivers, um, as we had discussed earlier, it could be in general financial audit or it could be in a general IT role. So not necessarily any of the roles above which qualify um, and you can get up to one year um, waiver on that. And then education experience, which maybe most of us would be able to at least get some time off from there. Um, one thing I really that really surprised me because I'm also an ACCA member is that you can get up to a two year waiver for ACCA member status. So if you're a chartered accountant, you already get two years off. Um, what also surprised me is that it's specifically ACCA, not ACA, not you know the other ones. It just made it just proved that you know my ACCA qualification is more relevant than I even thought, you know, when you're doing other qualifications, they recognize the effort that's gone into your ACCA and it can count towards reducing the amount of um, work experience that you need to prove. Um, so here I used my bachelor's, though I could have used my ACCA as well. Both of them gave me a two year waiver, but as I said, it's a maximum of three years. Um, so for example, if I have a bachelor degree and I'm also a member, um, that's, Oh, no, it's not allowing me to tick both. I'm not too sure why. As I mentioned, I, I used one of them, not both. But if you have two qualifying areas, you can basically claim up to three years um, as experience um, that, you know, you can use as a waiver to reduce the amount of time that you need to be in a relevant role. So I think someone mentioned that they're an accountant or they're working in accounting and can they do CISA and they go into IT audit <clears throat> or IT um, assurance or IT security. And I'm like, look, it's relevant even your ACC counts towards it. So definitely go for it, especially if you want a boost, because I know like financial auditors don't get paid as much as IT auditors. So IT audit is in um, a lot of demand. And this is because of everything going digital. Um, so there's a lot more um, focus on the vulnerabilities that come with going digital because many companies are just going digital because they've been surprised. They didn't properly plan for it. They probably don't have the right controls in place. So it's a hot area, um, both from an external audit perspective, but also from a controls advisory perspective. Um, okay, so once you've totaled it, it up, it needs to add up to five years. Um, the next bit is now actually verifying the work experience. And this is where you need someone from each employer that you've listed here, um, someone who can validate. They also need to validate this other bits, but that you can e easily show them through showing them your, your degree. Um, so if it's your manager, you can show them, look, I'm claiming two year bachelor's because I'm a graduate and here's my certificate. So it needs to be someone who's reliable, um, not just anyone to verify your work experience. Okay. Um, and then, um, it's just terms and conditions. So the next important bit here is where your verifier completes um, their verification. So you can see they attest to the work experience. That's very important. Um, and they also attest to the waivers that you have applied for. So if it's an educational degree, 
they need to probably see if it's a reliable person, they'll ask, are you actually a degree show me or um, degree certificate or any other way. But if you're an ACCA member, it's easy to prove that. Um, I used my manager, um, but you can actually use a supervisor, which supervisor would be a manager um, or a colleague or a client. Um, so someone who can prove that. And what they're proving, there's this other bit, which is very important. Something that surprised me is, um, so you need experience in each domain and CISA is heavily domain oriented and domains are the job practice areas, the different areas that with your CISA, basically you get relevant foundational knowledge. Um, domain one was where I fall in mainly, but you do need exposure to at least one task in each. So that's the good thing. You don't need all, you don't need to have done everything under each domain to tick that you have experience in that domain. And you can see it clearly says here, any or all tasks. So I found that very lenient compared to like ACCA where um, I had to prove my experience. There you had to show that you've met all the key objectives under each, um, all the key like objective areas under each objective. But here you only need to have at least one, which is easy. Like if you're in a, a, a relevant role, most likely you've done or at least have exposure to at least one of each. So like information systems auditing process, um, you can see here, you have either planned an audit. So if you're in any audit, IT audit role, or if you're in a corporate governance role related to IT, you easily tick off that. Um, domain two. So if you want to know the different domains, I've talked about them um, when um, in my video, which I'll probably tag here or here, um, where I cover um, tips for studying uh, for CISA. So there I cover what the five domains are, but you can see them here. Um, but some, as you can see, have more um, things that you can prove, um, while others it's small. Um, but the main thing to take away from this form is you just need at least one area in each domain to prove that you've done a, a relevant, that you've met the work experience requirement. So just working in a relevant role for five years is not enough. It needs to be relevant and that has enabled you to have exposure to at least one task in each area. So what you can do, if you're in a, in a role that's very repeatable and it's very focused on a certain bit, you can tell your manager that, look, I'm studying towards my ACCA. I do need to prove at least one task in each. Can I help out team X with this bit just so that I can get the relevant exposure that I need to tick off that domain? And it will help you just become even better in your job because a lot of these areas are interlinked in one way or another. Um, so if your job doesn't allow you to get exposure to all this at the same time, just because of how the job is, um, make sure that you intentionally get opportunities to be able to at least show that I've done something in that area. But yeah, so this is it. Once you have this, um, good thing you can fill in the form digitally. So I did that, got my line manager to sign it off and I got this very quickly. And it's as simple as that, which was much easier than I had to do in ACCA. Um, so yeah, wishing you all the best. Let me know if you have any other queries, anything that I need um, to explore further when it comes to CISA, but um, I'm hoping this answers your questions and best of luck as you apply to get CISA certified. Getting a qualification under your name is a sure way to remain relevant in this had economy. <laughs> All right, stay tuned and have a good one. Cheers. Bye.